can an elected member of Congress who say that they represent all people not condemn Farrakhan's hateful rhetoric? This is unbelievable, Liz. You know, our party, the Republican Party and our president, we have disowned and disavowed these disgusting ideologies that have no place in this country. But where are the Democrats? Where is the, are the media calling on the Democrats to disavow this? Instead, they've gotten a free pass and have been allowed to cozy up to Louis Farrakhan, who's made disgusting comments about his praise of Hitler and, and the Jewish people. And it's just vile. It's disgusting. And where are the calls to disown him? And where, on their own accord, are Democrats disavowing him? Kaylee, let's look at some of these other comments that Louis Farrakhan has made. He has, to your point, said, quote, Hitler was a very great man. He also said the Jews talk about never again. You cannot say never again to God because when he puts you in the oven, you're in one indeed. He also said this, and when a woman does not know how to cook and the right foods to cook, She's preparing death for herself, her husband, and her children. These are just some of the examples. Your reaction? This is despicable, absolutely despicable. And the Democratic Party likes to claim that they're progressive on women's values, on tolerance, on acceptance. Well, that litany of quotes that you just elicited. That's anything but acceptance. That's anything but progressivism. And yet they cozy up to this man. You have the DNC vice chair, Keith Ellison, who had dinner with him and meetings with him over years and years. You have these congressmen. You have the leaders of the Women's March. Where are they disavowing? They are not a party that's progressive at all. They are regressive. All right. So, you know, we, as we were saying in this breaking news, we've got to switch gears quickly, Kaylee. Uh, North Korea, the president popped his head unannounced into the briefing room, told a few reporters there that, quote, South Korea will be making a major announcement tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, they are expecting the South Korean national. This is the national security advisor for South Korea. He has been in here today meeting with General H.R. McMaster. Uh, he was introduced uh, by Press Secretary Sanders in the briefing room. Uh, what, is, what is your take on what's happening? This is breaking news coming in. Yeah, I think this president has been a lot closer to solving the North Korea problem uh, than people have given him credit for. You know, people have said, you know, they've looked at a strong arm approach, and I've praised that, and our parties praise that, and it, it looks like we're getting closer to a deal and that it might be working, and that, you know, now to have our South Korean ally here putting pressure on North Korea, we might be closer to a deal than any of us knew, and that's because of President Trump and the strength he's exhibited on it, this issue. You know, Kaylee, this is a time of year when uh, South Korea and the U.S. do their military drills. It's an annual exercise. They were delayed because of the Olympics. North Korea doesn't like them. They've told the country, the propaganda, that this is a prelude to the U.S. invading. Uh, it, it, the strong arm tactics by North Korea, will they continue apace? Because now you have the U.S. ratcheting up the military hardware and the presence in that region, in the Pacific region. Go ahead. Yeah, well, if they continue it, they know that there will be repercussions. And, you know, they, they oftentimes they'll engage in these nuclear tests, but they have a president that they know is not doing business with someone who wants to keep nuclear weapons and do harm to our, our southern allies, the, the South Koreans, uh, south of North Korea, of course. So, no, we have a president who's strong on this issue, who's tough on this issue, and North Korea knows it. This is not the presidency of Barack Obama.